Hi guys, welcome, welcome to my messy space, you guys. Welcome to my messy space. I'm super pumped to be here. I uh, haven't been here for quite a while, as a lot of you know. Um, I have been painting. I just haven't been doing any videos. So I do have a family member still in the hospital. Uh, we're not going to talk about that, but they are still in the hospital. So it's definitely kind of cut my creative time back. But tonight we are going to paint. And we're going to do a, I think we're going to do a modified bloom transfer. So this is leftover paint from previous pours. So what I have been doing is I've been torturing myself with these hot glue pieces. So if anybody has seen the works of Kenya Munch, she does these incredibly beautiful pieces where she draws her pattern out with a hot glue gun and then paints the image around it. It's, they're amazing. And if Tanya was in a bar, I'd buy her a double because her skills are so slick with glue. They really are. So I have been practicing. I am getting a little better, um, but I have definitely been torturing myself. I've said a few colorful words. Okay, here's my color lineup. Phalo green on a dirty background. Not a color I use often, but I thought we'd give it a whirl. This is Deco Art 24 Karat Gold. So I've changed my pouring medium as well. I think I've said a couple times now that I'm really trying to use up a lot of products that I have sitting around the house. And one of them was Floetrol. And I don't use it that frequently, but I had Floetrol and I had some Bare 8300, which I absolutely hate and so I mix the flow troll with the bare 8300 and a little bit of glue this is TLP lemon sorbet so my first attempt at videoing was a few days ago and it was a terrible video and a terrible pour and all the rest of it and I didn't know what ratios I used but now I've actually worked out the ratios so I mixed in a Dixie cup I used one part of the bare 8300 i mixed two parts of us flow troll and about half a dixie cup of white glue and it seems to be working pretty good okay this is my new might be my new color this is the tlp honey poem this is so pretty it falls right into my earthy colors with the exceptions of the green okay this is atelier red gold and then we're going to use black cell mix and we're going to blow it out. Hope for the best. Try to transfer it. So I know what else I want it to say. I did post a couple of my glue pieces on Facebook. And if you commented and you received a call from somebody promoting a book on acrylic pouring, I really want to say that it has nothing to do with me nothing to do with me i don't receive any perks from the book i don't even know if it's a legitimate book um it does piss me off that someone can promote the sale of their book or their literature or whatever kind of writing on the shirt tails of other artists so just let it be known i have nothing to do with it i have reported it as spam through facebook might be an amazing book but there's better ways to self-promote than on the pieces for others so i did reach out uh, reported it as spam. Neither one of the pictures of women that they use have any pores posted and that was my point. If you're going to promote your book or your literature, tag yourself, not me. So that's my rant. Okay, here we go. Bad hair and a big blowout. All right. Phalo green's quite pretty. Not a color I use often. So we're just going to put this aside because this is just going to be our puddle that we collect. So we're going to let it work its magic. And then we're going to flood a 4 by 16. I don't know if I'm going to spin it, but I better stick it down. And it's 4 by 16 white ceramic tile. And we're going to pop that right there. And in about 30 seconds, I'm going to have paint everywhere, so it's not going to matter. So this is Beauty Tone Velvet right out of the can. It's a little on the thick side, but we're going to try it anyway. 
And then we're going to modify because I haven't done any modification pieces for a really, really long time. So we're going to just go crazy with modifications. Maybe. When I say that is when I pour something that turns out really cool and then I don't modify. But my goal is to modify. Whether it happens, oh, we don't know. I might have to thin this base coat down if I decide to paint again because it's quite thick. For now, we'll just help it along. Okay. So I'm going to use a card to collect my paint. This is just a little plastic, I don't know, card from something. I'm going to fold up the edges and just kind of make myself a little scoop. Same as the way I do with playing cards. This is just a little cheeky piece of paper. So there's my puddle. And let's do this. So we're just going to let this slide down kind of at its own pace right now. Right from there. I am going to try to keep some negative space because I want to modify. So Underneath this base color, depending on how you turn your hand, will depend on how much of that base color we expose. There's our first little trickle. And then I'm going to pick up over here. And I'm going to come in this way, and we're just going to crisscross this. And then we're going to spin it and see if we can do something fun with it. Actually, let's just tip it for now. Just do a little bit of manual shifting. Yeah, I was super annoyed with this. We highly suggest you buy this book because people were calling me and asking me if this technique was in the book and how much does a book cost. And I don't know a bloody thing about the book and I don't want to know anything about it. And it was super, super frustrating. And so I'm sure if you asked me a question and you got a comment back about how we highly recommend you read this, um, I'm sure you wonder what was going on. But it was not me. All right, we're just going to do a bit of shift in here, guys. See? No more, no more clean surface. Paint everywhere. All right. Let's spin this. it the other way I'm just gonna scoop a little bit of this clean paint up and help this edge along and then we're gonna spin it again and then we're gonna modify maybe come right down off this edge a little bit now i won't be able to get this off there's my next problem you guys ceramic tiles when they're secured with paint don't like to move all right i'm gonna lose you for a second here
Okay, let's do this. So my first modifying tool is just these little wooden manicure implements. And you guys have been through this before. We're just going to pick an area and we're going to start making some little designs. Just nice, clean. This is, this is dreadfully boring. This just plain beige right there. All right, let's fix that. Scoop. And we'll balance it out on this side. I think I left all the pretty bits on the tile, on the other tile. Quick spin. All right, well, this is less boring on this corner. All right, same thing. Take your little skewer. I'm wiping off each time I go in. And we're just going to make some little lines. So the wider you hold your skewer, the darker, the deeper the line is. So if you want to make a really wide line, you're going to hold it on an angle. If you want to make a, just a tidy, thin line, then you just hold it almost upright. Keeping in mind that every line will change your composition. And not always for the better. I have many a piece ruined because I've decided just to make another line somewhere. All right, let's go. Let's go in here. So I'm pretty happy with this pouring medium. Um, I lost my cells other than right here, but that was nothing to do with the medium. It was the way that I put it on the tile. Instead of starting at the middle, I started at an end. Um, all in all, it kind of worked pretty good for me. Uh, yeah, so I did, like I said, I went back and measured things because it's uh, quite a bit cheaper. And I, I don't like Bear 8300. I just, I can't stand it. It has this weird gelatinous kind of consistency and I just find everything looks really nice and then in the morning it's all just kind of melted away and makes me very unhappy. I'm gonna pour a really pretty piece and I come out and it's like this just really pretty puddle. It's like no So we're just dragging the paint through. That's all we're doing. You can make little lines, you can make big lines. You can make lots of lines or you can just make a few. But this, these are just really simple little movements, you guys. You guys can all do this. You all can do this. All right. So my second modifying tool of choice is a big popsicle stick, fat one. And you guys have all seen this. We're just gonna pop it down on the line and just kind of wiggle it back and forth. And it just creates a funky little chain. This is not a good example because it's light on light. Let's do, let's do one here. A 
again, I'm wiping off just so that I don't smear that color into the white. I like everything really crisp and clean and tidy and white smeared into it would not achieve the crispy tidy that I like. Back with the popsicle stick or the manicure stick. Look around. So this is a wide line. So we're gonna rock it back and forth so that it reaches the color on either side of the line that you're trying to pinch together. Again, it just uh, creates just some sort of visual interest, just a place kind of your eye kind of wanders around, says, oh, wow, what's that? That's my theory, you guys. Okay, gloves off now, serious business. So my third modifying tool is these metal kebab sticks. Uh, it is stainless steel, but it's covered in paint, so you would never know that. And it has a popsicle stick shape on one end, this end, and a round ball on the other. And the round ball is the one that I use predominantly for making all my little curly cues. So we're just putting our paint down, our paint down, our skewer down, kind of in the middle between the paint. I usually drop it down between the white or whatever your base coat is and the acrylic color. And we're just giving it a little bit of a twirl, just gently, and we're gonna pick it up as we go. If it doesn't hold now, come back 20 minutes from now, it will hold. Anything with a lot of pigment powders, like any of the piggies, they need to set up a little bit before the curls will stay tight. But once they set, it's perfect. So make a few of those. So this gray is our base paint which was predominantly, our base for our bloom, which was predominantly dirty white paint from previous pours. And the interior latex paint doesn't hold as well as your acrylic. So definitely if it's on a layer that is predominantly your my base paint, then I have to come in and give them another half a twist. 20 minutes from now, everything will set up and it'll be perfect. Perfect, perfect, you guys. All right, let's just go in and make some just little lines. We're gonna fix that little white spot. So now we're just gonna come back in and we're just decorating, which is what I'm doing tomorrow. I'm putting my Christmas tree up, I'm so excited. My granddaughter is like over the moon. I took her to the mall today just to get out of the house so that her mom had a couple hours to yourself we took her I went to the mall and of course Santa's house is all set up and she touched everything and oh it was so much fun quite often I'm bah humbug about Christmas because it's a huge commercial holiday but I'm kind of pumped this year I can hardly wait to get things decorated So little lines, that's all we're doing. Just making little fancy decorations. So again, if you wanted to take this even farther, you could go back in and dot a lot of these. Um, I just take my same manicure implement, whatever toothpick, um, any one of those tools make really good implements to modify with. Toothpicks, dental picks, these dental things, they're like a thousand of them from Amazon for $12.99 or something like that. And you could go back in if you wanted to put whatever color dots and just dab it into your paint and just put little dots in it. I'm not going to dot it tonight. I'm just going to leave things alone before I get 
overly complicated on this pour. And then I'm going to give it another spin. So a good test for me, whether my paint is working well, is if everything looks the same, only just kind of spreads out a bit. So we're going to try it. So I think everything is looking pretty tight, which is good. I like that. All right, I'm going to spin one more time, you guys. I'm going to spin it this way this time. All right. My first detailed pour in a while, and I like it. I like it, I like it. All right, you guys, I'm gonna put you on hold. You're gonna ignore the paint all over here and I'll bring you down and show you what we've done. Hang on, guys. Okay, there we are from directly above. I'm gonna turn the lock on the light off. So it gives you a little bit more light. It was probably way too dark of a video. And let's see if we can get close. Okay, so here's all these pretty little sections. There's lots of sparkle. I apologize for the glare. So here's all our little, just our little wispy lines that we've made that just really add interest. There's our curly cues. Love the new piggy color. That's the first one I've tried. And there we go again from above. All right, my friends. Take care. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, you guys. Um, if you've questioned, had questions or comments or whatever, and I've just kind of commented with a heart, I am still here, you guys. I read all your comments. I just, I've been crazy busy. And so the heart or the like is just to let you know I've read your comment. And as soon as life kind of gets back in control, I will go right back to gabbing. All right, guys. Bye for now.